Now, in studio with me, I have three gentlemen who are going to take us through this discussion on the security laws bill. On the extreme, I'm not even sure if it's right or left, depending on where you're looking. Patrick Gadara, who's a communication consultant, thank you for joining us. Right. We're also joined by the MP of Mungi Central, Joe Mutambu, thank you for joining us. And Irungu Kangata, who is the MP of Keharo, thank you. So, uh, as that story was airing, Patrick, you were asking the legislators here, we haven't seen the amendments. When are we going to see them? Are we going to be able to see them before they're published and debated in Parliament? So, Irungo, why don't you just give us an answer to that very quickly? Well, uh, for now, it is impossible for the public to see the amendments. And for obvious reasons, because those amendments are coming left, right and center. So, therefore, they will crystallize as amendments today. Uh, the, the standing orders of the National Assembly provide that an amendment can be proposed at least one day before, meaning as we speak, we had amendments which were brought yesterday. So you cannot really tell the nature of those amendments until today. Okay. Um, if, if I may, one of the things that concerns me is, um, given the nature and the public interest in this, I, um, it would be good to be more transparent about it. Um, they said, at least as per your report, that uh, the committees have adopted certain amendments. But we have no idea what they are. So the question that you're asking the public, you know, should it be adopted, should the bill be adopted as is, is actually already outdated because they are making changes. So what are these changes? You know, what will they be voting on? Now, we'll have to wait, I suppose, till it goes to the floor of the House. By that time, it's too late for us to have opinions on it. Okay, I'm uh, seeing. I'm seeing. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think my colleague here. Let me call him my colleague <laughs> for for the time being. Is jumping the gun. We have. A, uh, we, we do our job as uh, as uh, as part of the law, and uh, there's the way we do our work. If the committee adopts the report, that does not mean it is already passed. So mm -hmm. relax. You don't. You don't have to worry. Uh, uh, well, there's much to worry about. No, no, you don't have to worry. Already. If the committee <laughs> adopts the report or approves the report, that does not mean the parliament has approved it because mm. it has to come to the floor of the house and they have to debate it. And then another thing I have to say is uh, Kenyans elected members of parliament to do their job. We are the people who make laws. You can only propose and bring it to parliament for us to look at it and accept and pass it. If it is not good for the country, not for the, and for not for an individual, not for you, not for me, not for my friend here, not for president, not for Allah, not for who, for the country. We should not make laws for individuals. We should make laws for the people. Okay, Mutambo, allow me to jump in. Yes. Let me jump in there and ask a question because it's been said that the debate around the security bill has been trivialized because it's become a jubilee code situation. Do you agree with this? Well, are we debating this bill with public interest at heart, or are we debating it with politics in mind? Well, to a certain extent, yes, and to a certain extent, no. Yes, to the extent that you, we have seen court membership, uh, particularly the big weeks in court opposing this bill. Uh, but of course, I've also seen members in court who are supporting this bill. Well, to, to the best of my knowledge, my colleague here, he is in court, and he happens to be supporting the bill, isn't it? Uh, maybe <laughs> I don't, that is very true. <laughs> I don't, Actually, so, I support so the, the bill. The point is, so I don't think it well, is. Well, uh, of, 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 yeah. of course, also I've also seen a person like Chris Wamalwa. He is in fact a senior member of the court coalition. He supports our proposals. So therefore, but on one hand yes, on another hand no. But we've also seen Kindiki Kiduri and other Jubilee coalition uh, legislators come out and senators as well, uh, essentially chest thumping, saying, "Come Thursday." this bill will pass. In fact, it has already passed. Well, of course, they have every right to celebrate numbers. Of course, they have every right, of course, to mobilize their, their supporters and also to probably to tell Kenyans that indeed the majority of parliamentarians are supporting of this bill. So therefore, it is not something I would say accord versus jubilee issues. To me, it's an issue of Kenyans who want security to be in versus Kenyans who was to politicize the issue. Um, let, let me bring in Gadara, yes. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, you just said that you guys will legislate on the interests of Kenyans. Well, the Solicitor General was on uh, uh, NTV, I think it was last week or, or earlier this week, um, essentially saying that he acknowledges that there are problems with this bill. You know, um, uh, the uh, CIC, I said there are problems with it. The I, I poor, I said there are problems with it. So for you to sit here and 
your job is to go through and to ensure that it actually um, uh, uh, abides by uh, the Constitution, by uh, what's in there, and not to be the ones raising these issues, simply saying we will pass it. No, 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 let me correct it. There's a problem there. No, 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 let me correct it. What is it that you we, agree we with? Said, we said, we said we support the bill, but definitely we'll, if there are some amendments, we'll look at this amendment. When uh, the bill came to the parliament, it did not come to the parliament just to rubber stamp. It came to uh, the parliament so that it can be debated. No, no, it like so that it can be stamp. debated. So we are going to debate. <laughs> we are going. To, I mean, we are going to to script. Hasn't it deal? gone through two readings already? You know, didn't see much from yourselves from people coming up and saying, "Well, actually, these are the bits we think are unconstitutional. Let's change this." You uh, acted very much as if. It's a rubber stamp. It's a, you know, you guys were, I mean, um, Jubilee MPs were called to State House, I think, the day before or something. <laughs> but, but let's listen to Mutambo very, because, because I mean, he is in I a very, he's, he's in a very unique situation in that he's an outlier given that the Code Coalition has said we are going to oppose each and every clause. First, what do you think of that? Um, and do you think that this debate is being, the question I ask, being debated with the soberness that it deserves, or have we over-politicized it? I, th I think that's the point. Uh, I, I will not play politics with the lives of Kenyans. Security is a very sensitive aspect. When it comes to security, we need to be cautious. And whatever we say, we need to think about our country. It is so annoying to see somebody saying that, hi, instruct you to go out there and oppose this bill. Little do they know that I lose people. I represent Mwinki Central. I lost people just the other day out of insecurity. And I know what it means to have someone killed. Those people who are saying that this bill is bad, they are not telling us what is wrong with it. Right? So if I see anything which can protect the lives of people, let me tell you something. I will be there and I will fight for it. Okay. I will not fight for it because I'm in court, neither uh, because I'm, uh, I mean, I, I, I sympathize with the Jubilee. Uh -huh. I'll do so because I'm a Kenyan and I know how it feels to lose somebody. Irungo, do you have anything to add to that because I know that you're on the same page here? Well, the point is, in my own opinion, I'm asking parliamentarians to rise above partisan issues. Exactly. They should rise above politics. And to me, in my own opinion, I think the first function of any state is to keep security. So therefore, on this matter, I'm calling upon parliamentarians to take one line. Number two, probably to answer some of the issues that have been raised by my colleague, I will respond in two ways. One, I do not think because uh, Mr. Nyachai or even Mr. Njai Muturi, when they oppose something or when they say something, that uh, we should take that one as authority. That's number one. Number two, uh, be that as it may, when we are talking about first reading, second reading, it does not necessarily mean that we are going to pass that law as as it was during those readings. Those were merely the issue, I would say, procedural. We are just debating. Now the actual drafting of the law is today. Today is when we are going now to look at each and every clause. And we amend it, we agree on it, or even we refuse to pass it. So therefore, it does not mean that when, because first reading, we agree with everything, second reading, now that that reading we are going to accept each and every item. Okay, no. so there are two questions which come up from that. Do we then disregard anyone who comes up and has a contrary opinion because they are not the authority? Because they do represent a constitution of people as well. And secondly, you've said it yourself here, that security outrides everything. So we know your stand. Do we then expect to trust you and other people who hold a similar view that you will change your mind suddenly when you get to parliament? No. One, to reply to your first issue, of course, everyone has an opinion. We must always take that opinion into account. So therefore, the views of uh, Mr. Nyachai, the views of Mr. J. Muturi, we shall take them into account. That's number two. I agree on the issue of security. The security is very important to us. And I would like even my colleague here to tell me, he should pinpoint and say this and this clause is wrong, is unconstitutional, and then we can now move up. The okay, Gadara, why, uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> why don't you do that? Yes. I'm willing to read out any segments that you point out. I've got the bill with um, me here. Uh, well, I mean, there, there's quite a lot that I think um, uh, is, is, is objectionable um, about this bill. Um, uh, take the provision, for example, um, uh, on, 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 on the process of fair trial, I think the amendments to the uh, Criminal Procedure Code, if I'm not wrong, you know, um, and the fact that they can withhold evidence from suspects or, or from actually people they're prosecuting. 
you know, and say, we won't show you, we won't tell you what we are saying. The fact that beforehand they can decide certain things are agreed, you know, the prosecution, you know. Now, uh, again, Sister General, uh, speaking on TV, says one of the four areas of, 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 in the Bill of Rights that cannot be touched, you know, that cannot be limited, is the right to a fair trial. You know, how do you get a fair trial when you don't even know, you know what it is that they, what evidence they're saying they're giving you when they're trying to compel you to, give, to tell them what, how you're going to defend yourself? Okay, um, so <laughs> then we'll talk about the, the, the clause that he's quoting, obviously, from the Constitution, Article 25 on fair trial, mm -hmm. which seems to be in con contravened in this bill, mm -hmm. is this one of the ones that has have been cited? Um, do you think it's it's valueless? We should ignore those no, those no, concerns? No no, 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 no. I'm not saying that it's valueless, and I'm not saying that we are going to ignore it. Uh, from, <laughs> from the point of, uh, uh, from my friend here, uh, as, as lawmakers, we have to make law to suit each and every individual in this country. And what I can assure you is this. If somebody has committed a crime, a due process of the law must be a follow to prosecute them. You cannot take somebody to court without evidence. And if you do not have evidence, you can, okay, I think what, 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 what we are trying to do here, or what they are trying to say is that maybe we are not going to tell you off right that this is the evidence we have, but we must, or that evidence must be induced in court. You cannot take somebody to court without no, evidence. No, actually, again, the law says that they won't show you. They will decide if things are sensitive, they touch on uh, uh, national security, etc. And it's drafted very vaguely. They will decide what they will show you. you know. So again, here is my suggestion. That is what I'm saying. You know, is the law as it stands. You know, should it be a matter of people simply saying, I agree with it or I disagree with it, you know, that you go through what it says, you know, all, all those on provisions on people being uh, held and how it's drafted seems to open the door for detention without trial, indefinite detention without no, trial. No, 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 no. You know, it speaks of people being, uh, I mean, the, 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 the police applying after 24 hours for an extended uh, uh, holding period, then speaks of remand, which are two different things, mm -hmm. you know. So it actually opens the door for you to be detained for fairly lengthy periods of time, and even when you're remanded, to be remanded for up to a year. And this is a person against whom no, nothing has been proved, you know. And we are simply oops, oops. allowing... Um, let's, 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 let's allow your to come in, because he, he appears to have a response to that. Well, uh, first and foremost, the rights to a fair trial are captured in Article 50 of the Constitution. Number two, Article 24 provides for a mechanism of uh, limiting the so-called rights which are captured in our Constitution. But of course, I know it says Article 50, you cannot abrogate rights under that. Mm -hmm. Number two, when you talk about fair trial, what is a fair trial? That is a very subjective issue. Because it is for us parliamentarians to set out the parameters of what is a fair trial. So therefore, for instance, uh, let, let me, uh, for instance, <laughs> yeah. what you're talking about, in my own opinion, mm -hmm. does not in any way violate the concept of fair trial. We have what we call redacting evidence. Redacting evidence is a practice that is even done internationally. In ICC, where we have Kenyans who are facing charges there, they do redact evidence. But redacting does not mean withholding. It means, for instance, no, allow me to, to, to develop my argument. It means that you withhold that evidence for the purposes of the public and also probably to ensure the security of the witnesses and that evidence is not compromised. But that does not mean you do not disclose that one to the accused person. That's number one. Number two, you are brought out on the issue of uh, 24 hours and detention without trial. Mm -hmm. No, there is no such kind of a possibility in this law. In my own opinion, I think people are just saying things which they have not read this. Because when you talk about the detention, detention without trial. It is something that is currently even is happening. Where, for instance, when you arrest a suspect, you are arresting that a suspect in, in a preemptive manner. So you have not really been able to gather evidence. What we usually do presently, you take that suspect before a magistrate, then you seek for an extension of time. Mm. So what we have done, basically, 
the, the present situation, when you go to a magistrate, they usually give you about two weeks. In some complex cases, when you get two weeks, it's usually very hard for you to be able to nail that person. Two weeks, you have to really go around looking for that evidence. So what we have done is just to extend that period. Instead of the practice presently of about two weeks, we are now providing in the statute. It's not two weeks. It can go to about one year for obvious reason. Why? Because we have seen the current situation of two weeks. It's not even founded per se in a statute. It's just a judicial practice. It's not practicable towards looking this at the case. This is two weeks before you're charged. Well, yes, it happens. Is it? it? Yes, before no, you're wait, charged. Hold on. Your, your statute, again, speaks of remand, you know, which is after you're charged and says you can be held up to 30 days or an extension up to 90 days, you know. Um, but at the point where the policeman applies to hold you for longer uh, before uh, he I charges you. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's, no, let's, let's, let's go. <laughs> allow, me, allow me to go, allow me to pick up from um, where Gadara has left off because he's introduced a very important aspect, which is we have the systemic issue of corruption within our police force. How do we trust them with such what Gadara is explaining as loopholes to then implement what is already being seen as a controversial law? Well, first and foremost, the issue of about corruption, that is not something, in my own opinion, we should conjoin with the issue of whether a law is good or not. Yeah. Because, surely, it's like saying, for instance, you are not going to provide a law, let's say, for instance, traffic law. Why? Because police uh -huh. are going to become corrupt. No, <laughs> those to me, you are mixing issues. Um, no. Allow me. No, 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 no. no Look, I, I, in my own opinion. I think that's a mistake. No, 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 no. no. Uh, Allow let him me. finish, and then yeah. I'll give you a chance, Gadara. What we should do, in my own opinion, one, make the law to fight corruption. But don't say we are not going to make the law because police are going to become corrupt. That's number one. Number two, we must also understand our country, when it's come to the legal system, what is at the pains at the can our country per se. It's not even the letter of the law. It's the culture. It's the culture. And we have a very liberal culture now. So therefore, don't imagine that this law, for instance, we are going to use it against opposition <laughs> politicians. Because I have seen some that's people constructing. Exactly. No, we cannot use that's, it against that's actually, let's, let's allow Gadara to come in. Yes. That's, that's, that's an exact problem. You know, uh, in my view, I, I do, uh, uh, with most of these laws, is the, the new and discretion it allows the people in power. And the assumption behind it that these aren't bad people. You know, they're not going to use these powers badly. Well, in Moe's time, we saw exactly how they could be used. When you allow blanket surveillance of people, you know, which is, again, what the bill says, they don't have to go get a court order in order to come and look at what you're doing. And the argument is, well, if you're not doing something bad, you have nothing to hide. Actually, there's a lot of things that I do that I really don't want to put out there. If somebody comes to me today and says, well, since you have nothing to hide, give me the password to your email. You know, and I, I challenge any of you guys, say it out over here. Let them go through your email if you have nothing to hide. Of course you have uh, stuff no, to hide. No, we have nothing to hide. <laughs> 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 no, 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 let me finish. And, and this has um, been shown. One of the ways that the state exercises power by the individual and gets him to conform to it is through surveillance. You know, and this is a way of simply fighting and, and clamping down on dissent. The idea that somebody is constantly watching you, mm -hmm. you know, and it's something we need to resist ourselves. We need to say, no, you want to watch what I'm doing? Well, take the evidence to a court, get a magistrate to sign a court order, and then you can do this. But okay, to say Mutamu, everyone can I, be watched. I, I, I think, I, can, we, can we disregard though what he is saying? Because, I don't, I don't, because I don't. this bill is proposing that not only the NIS surveil you, mm -hmm. uh, but also your landlord, mm -hmm. potentially the person who you go to church with, the person who is in charge of that building, whoever it is, um, collecting constantly evidence or, or information about you that can be used against you. Let me tell you something. If you are not a criminal, what are your ID? It doesn't oh, matter. Of, I, I, I sing number, in the shower. You put a, 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 a camera there, I'll probably stop. No, no, number <laughs> two. Number two. Do you know, for your information, I've been to so many countries. Do you know all the emails you receive? Somebody somewhere looks at them. Do you know the message I sent to you through <coughs> your phone today? If I send you a text message, do you know that message, Safaricom, there is Mutambu, let oh, me ask you then, let me, let me jump in. Dispute that. They have it. If I want the record, the record, if I want the record I'm asking of you, my message, is that legal? I'll go to Safaricom, I'll retrieve them. <laughs> is, is that legal? Uh, Mutambu, let so me... So that means somebody somewhere 
can read what I sent Is that you? legal? Yes or no? Yeah. No, no, what do you mean, yes or no? I'm asking <laughs> you. No, I, and, and here's my thing. Okay, gentlemen, 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 let's bring the conversation back to the issue here. Um, and what you're, what you're saying is that because there's a vast countries of, the, there are vast countries who are already doing this, then we should adopt it, whether or not it is right. Just so that we are part yeah. of the... It is not the question of being right, it's a question of being secure. You have to be oh. secure. You don't know what it takes to make you secure. Um, okay, Gadara oh. is exhausted already. He's yeah, signed. He no, 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 He's no. frustrated. <laughs> no. Um, but the question here is, how do you balance the security of people versus, and this is what is being debated, versus their basic human rights? Well, in my own opinion, when you talk about human rights, you must also look at them as, one, they are not casting stone. They are not. Number two, it is an issue of balance. You look at a right, and that's how you look at what we call responsibilities. Otherwise, there's a way you can frame human rights, and therefore this country cannot move forward. For instance, you can say every Kenyan has the right of movement. So therefore, the law of trespass, one can even argue, is unconstitutional. So therefore, when you talk about right, we must also talk about what we call responsibilities and duties. So therefore, assuming you agree to that school of thought, that the rights, they are not per se, absolute that we have what we call responsibilities now you you therefore agree to my argument that state for instance has a greater responsibility on security to me this is an issue of looking at two issues which in at times they do conflict one the right to privacy vis-a-vis -vis the right to security when it comes to security as my colleague says the government does a lot of things probably to ensure you are secure and that may entail to a certain extent you agreeing to 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 cede some of your privacy, some of the entitlement to privacy. Because essentially, look here. Irungu, let's not minimize this. It's more than privacy. No, 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 no. It's, it's more than privacy. No, 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 no. It is. It is. It is. It no, is number two. No, 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 number two. That you either have security or you have rights is a false dichotomy. And actually, in many cases, it is the very enforcement of rights that gives security. You know, you cannot be saying that the only way we become secure is by submitting to a totalitarianism of government. No, you know, allow, me, allow, me, government. allow me to that give you examples. Yeah, no, yeah, no, sure, no. Let, 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 let me give you a good example. Yeah. Uh, let us look what we call best practices all over the world, isn't it? In UK, for instance, I would say that it's a, it's a democracy, isn't it? It, has some of, it is the most uh, country with so many cameras zooming left, right, and center. Mm -hmm. Some people have argued it is unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. It is intruding in people's mm -hmm. privacy. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, the country has seen it makes sense for those cameras to be there to ensure that security of that country is not compromised. So it's you at times to, to take. That's number one. Number two, we have seen even in the most progressive countries, the issue of security at times may entail the so-called probably limitation of some rights. A good example is in the U.S. Presently, it is in the middle of a crisis because they have been able to smash up a, a scandal of the CIA mm -hmm. where they were doing torture. Mm -hmm. So, number three, give me yeah, example. No, 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 wait, 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 number wait. three, no, 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 do yeah. this. Please do this. Give me example of any society where it has taken a soft approach to law. I saw the so-called human rights, absolute human rights, and he has been able to succeed in security issues. One, me, I'm going to give you countries on the opposite radar. For instance, Again. I'm going to give you examples here in Kenya. We had the so-called rebellion in Mount Kenya, in, 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 in Motelgo. You can see the Scott Art policy of government is one which succeeded in restoring peace in Motelgon. We had a prizing in Central Province. You remember the youth of Central Province. It was the so-called Meshuki, firmness, which enables this country to go back on, on track. So the bottom line, when it comes to security, you choose. Do, do, you choose. Do we actually uh, not? Gadara, 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 Gadara. Irungu's argument is that these two issues are not mutually exclusive. That um, for you to have security, you must sacrifice something, right? That's what he's saying. That's yeah. what you're saying. Yes, no, no, no. And you're saying that this is not true, and he's not asking true. you let, to let give examples. Him, yes. Let me tell him in a language yeah. you can understand. No, no, let me tell him in a language you can understand. You are sick. Mm -hmm. You have uh, uh, your right of privacy. Mm -hmm. And you are sick, you go to a doctor. Mm -hmm. You will tell your doctor that I have rights of my privacy, so you cannot see me naked. No. 
So why are you saying no? But, but if a doctor, I mean, no, seriously, if the same doctor, if the same doctor, or somebody who is not my you doctor, you want to be treated. Hold on. So you have to be naked. Hold on. No, yes. no, 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 no. Gentlemen, please, let's give Gadara yeah, a chance no, no. to respond. Uh, uh, <laughs> let's let give him, let's uh, give him no, a chance to respond. Please, please, let me respond. Please, let me okay. respond. It, please, let me give respond. us an example. Let's take the example I did give of the U.S. Uh -huh. You know, and the abuses that we have seen under. You know, uh, what, the, I mean, the, the hidden aspects of, 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 of what the security services were doing. And that the fact that they themselves admitted, you know, that even when they tortured people, they really didn't get much, you know. Second, um, when we think, when, when, when I hear legislators say that what happened in Mount Elgon, what happened when the police were, quote, unquote, fighting Mungiki was okay, I really get worried. Because these are the guys who are going to be voting on this bill. I.e. what they're saying is the individual guy, who may be innocent or not, who is murdered there, who is uh, maimed for life by police, it's okay for as long as they can say they're doing it for national uh, security. Are you telling Let me, me finish. No, no. Are you Let telling me, me it is okay for a family to lose a member? No, it is not. Are you telling me it, it is, is not? Okay? It is not. Uh -huh. It is of course not. So but how do you want to deal with it? Now, here's what I'm saying Mutabu. is, if, 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 if and, and, and there is an argument that even you can understand because your president used it, you know. Uh, he goes there and says, well, it's really bad for people to be killed. But actually, jailing the wrong person doesn't help. That's what he said. Killing the wrong person doesn't secure anybody. The idea that let's just go around arresting mass people, and they have done it. We have seen them do it in Isili. We have seen them do it in Garissa, where last year they arrested up to 600 guys, saying it's an anti-terror operation, and only charged 75, of which 70 of them were for not having an ID. Nobody, not a single guy was charged with anything to do with terrorism. 600 people. Do you know why? You know, do you know why? 600 because, people. Because, I mean, because, because there was no law to get down or to pin down No, this what you guys are doing is now <laughs> allowing this and actually legislating, after the fact, legalizing this. Okay. You know, you're mm -hmm. saying um, we can have wide nets that grab everybody. <laughs> you know, we can nah, surveil nah, nah, nah. So then, Irungu, Irungu, let me bring you in because <laughs> uh, what Gadara is saying is echoing what we had Moses Batangula say, that what we're simply doing is sanitizing that which we know is already wrong. Do you think this is correct? No, of course it is not. Because, number one, again, my colleague, he did not give us examples. <laughs> <laughs> he did, because he cannot get examples in this world. No, I, that's number one. Number two, number two, in my own opinion, we are not sanitizing anything. We are just we are just coming up with proposals to enable our security forces to be able to tackle this problem in a better manner. Because currently, our security forces are fettered by the laws. The laws that we have, How? indeed. And one, I have given you an example. You arrest a person today. You want to do an investigation. You arrange that person within 24 hours. You ask for time extension. You are given two weeks. Two weeks here you want to do, maybe for instance, cross-border investigation. Why, why are you arresting him without evidence? Let for obvious reason. Out. You have what I would say grounds for suspicion. You do have grounds for suspicion. Right. But when you... Uh, I don't hold two, people you on also suspicion. You to do what is called, what is called to preempt. Oh, this guy is saying... We allow those guys to do it, then we arrest after the fact, surely. No, 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 no. Again, that is okay, not true. Let me bring in, let me bring in, let me, Irungu, allow me to bring in one of our viewers who says, in response to the question, do we think this law should be, this bill should be passed as is, says, no, no, Jubilee should not legislate laws that will haunt them 10 years later. I wish to tell them that. They should not look at things with their eyes, but rather with their mind. This is Kasura from Narok, and I've heard this said a lot, that um, this bill right now is being looked at against the backdrop of what's happening in the country but 15 20 years from now when the problem of al-shabaab is gone it will be more harmful than it is good um mutamba i don't know what you think about uh, this and what your response would be to kasura l let me let me tell you something there's this drug bill i mean uh, if you are arrested with the drugs what happens to you what happens to you you are jailed for life no bail where are these guys are what do you mean no bail yeah you get no. arrested today with the drugs. No, the being jailed for life and no bail are two different issues. No, no. I'm saying you cannot be given bail when, I mean, when you are going through the process. Uh, right? Yes, you can. You are, you are detained. No, 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 you cannot. Yes, you Maybe can. Maybe you don't know the law. 
I don't know whether uh, you guys understand. Actually, the constitution itself. You, no, <laughs> you know, so you don't. Your right to the guys are rotting in Kibera. Mm, you know, I mean, are rotting uh, here yeah, because yes, they cannot raise their bill. These are these are discretions that are given so, to courts. You know, and in fact, no, here. Wait, 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 uh, uh, my, my question. Uh, I think uh, you better. Li I think it's good to learn to listen. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> listen to my point. Uh, if you are arrested, okay, with the drugs, maybe somebody put those drugs in your in your mm -hmm. pocket. You are, you are, it is not your wish. You're all right? it's not you're, available you're, offense. Exactly. All right? You don't have, you cannot get a pill. You, you are taken maybe to jail for life. And you are innocent. What do you say about that? Um, you're taken to jail for life when you're innocent.